how to install and configure OpenSUSE for the GPD Win, or rather the GPD Lin. Maybe not. Anyway, you need a pretty large USB drive. I recommend at least eight gigabytes. X86. All right. Just have to let this download. Let's open the image writer. So I'm gonna install my thumb drive in my main computer. It was automatically detected, my eight gigabyte thumb drive. And we've selected the latest snapshot. Go ahead and write that. It will destroy any data on the thumb drive. It just will. Password. Now we just wait for this magic box to complete. Now's a good time to shout out to the guy who did actually most of the work and did like all the kernel coding and whatnot. Uh, this guy's a badass. Just saying. Uh, I've compiled his kernel and I'll link to where you can download the RPM. It is ideal if you downgrade your BIOS in Windows before you do this. If you didn't, you'll still be okay but it is ideal if you do because there's a couple BIOS changes that we can change if we have an older BIOS and it's actually pretty easy to install this older BIOS I'll link to the zip folder all you do is in Windows extract the zip folder double click the batch file and it just installs the BIOS and it's pretty easy I have heard there's a way to install a BIOS in Linux um, I've never done that and I will never do that because I'm already on the right BIOS so Good luck with that. Our image is done writing. I'll go ahead and pull out my thumb drive and insert it into the back of my GPD win. All right, let's spam delete. Oh boy, notice their BIOS is like weirdly sideways. Um, it's, it's okay, it's not too hard to use. If you don't have this many options, you have the wrong BIOS, or rather the, the less ideal BIOS. But if you install this kernel, you'll still be okay. I've changed my boot option to the UEFI USB disk. So, theoretically, that's going to allow me to boot to the USB device now. Save and exit. Save changing settings. So, let's boot it up, expecting it to use the USB device. Great, it detected it. I hit down arrow really quick there so that it wouldn't continue booting into the installer. I'm gonna hit E to edit this and scroll down to my Linux line. At the end of my Linux line, I'm going to append this argument and this argument with a space in between. So I'll do that now. Once that's typed in, I'm going to hold down the fin key and zero, which will be F10, and that'll boot me into my system. If you have a USB hub and could be booting from a USB hub and you can put a USB mouse in, or if you could plug into a HDMI monitor, you're way better off than I'm about to be, because I'm going to have to use a joystick that's uh, the up is not up and it's rotated 90 degrees shit uh becomes a contest of how well can you install using a 90 degree rotated mouse i'm just gonna go to next all the way to the partitioner screen i feel adventurous so i'm gonna go to expert partitioner you can partition it however you want but so I went with a really simple partition scheme here. Um, I have a half gig FAT32 partition at the very beginning for my EFI boot. Then I have a four gigabyte swap partition. And then I have the rest allocated for my root partition. Make sure that you have boot EFI set for your mount point for the FAT32 file system. The rest of this is gonna be pretty standard. I'm gonna install with GNOME. 
but I'm gonna install Mate after I'm done. I just prefer Mate at the end of the day. And now we just wait for it to install. Let's get another thumb drive, or you can repartition your old thumb drive. We're done with it now. Um, and copy over the wireless config file. All right, so we've got the file copied over to our thumb drive. Go ahead and eject this. I'm going to open a terminal. CD to my drive. So CP your local copy slash firmware BR CM permission denied. Yep, okay. Pseudo. <laughs> Once that file's been copied over, go ahead and reboot, and you should have wireless con connectivity. So if you're still having wireless issues, it could be because of this BIOS bug. It can be worked around if you have this older version of the BIOS. Just by going to this chipset, south bridge, etc, etc, and setting it to disabled. I recommend that you do this if you have the ability to. Alright, so... This is just Ice Weasel. I'm just going to use this temporarily to install Mate. So then I'm just going to go to Software Management, go to View Patterns, and then Mate. And then Accept, and wait for your Mate packages to install. And I have a Mate option now. Log on in. All right, so now that we have Mate installed, a couple things are messed up. One, the screen is sideways, um, but we can use the touch screen while it's sideways. That will cause a bug uh, once we rotate the display. So I'll go ahead and rotate the display now just by going to the menu, typing in display. Display settings. Right. All right, so now that things are rotated right, I'll keep this configuration. Oh, touchscreen's no longer working. All right, another thing that drives me crazy is the mouse. I feel like uh, setting this to left-handed mouse makes more sense. That way you can control your computer with this most of the time. So if I want to go to folders, I can, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, rather than having to use two hands to control the device always. I have a fancy script I'll put on my website that'll uh, rotate the touch input so it's no longer off like this. I've already got a copy of it on here. TouchWrite.sh. Execute that and your touch input should be aligned. Um, something to note is it's hard-coded um, to expect that you booted with this mouse option in the middle not in gamepad mode. If you were in gamepad mode, this touch script would need to be slightly different. So um, if you use this script, just make sure you boot with the mouse mouse pad mode. Or you'll be confused why it doesn't work. Now let's go to my website and download those kernel RPMs. Alright, um, it might not look like this, considering uh, there's not much here, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and download my RPMs that I need. I have all the kernel packages downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and sudo zipper in dot slash kernel asterisk. Alright, uh, now that the kernel is installed, let's go into yast. So yast, then we want the bootloader. In the bootloader config, we want to go to kernel parameters and add in our kernel parameters. Whatever you have in here, just append the same things we've been appending. So this command line, or this kernel option and this kernel option, as well as the DMI product name equals gpdwin. All right, so a couple things we need to do here. Hit E and then scroll down to your Linux line again. So it should say something 
like Linus, EFI, boot, VM, Linus, and then a bunch of options. If you don't have the GPD win plus at the end, then it's uh, it's not the right kernel. You, you need to specify which kernel in your, your grub config file. Assuming that that did work and your command line options are in that mess of options, you can select F10 again to boot. All right, so another thing that I had to do in order to get the headphone jack working properly, I had to blacklist this HDMI audio. Assuming you're not gonna need to have sound through HDMI, your headphone jack just won't work right unless you do this. So well, let's go ahead and edit this file on my GPD Win and add this line. Okay, nothing too fancy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot again. So my touchscreen is still off aligned every time I restart. That's a easy fix. I'm just gonna add that script to my startup config. So in here, startup, startup applications, then add, we'll type in the name of fix, and then command, I'm gonna to go to browse, select the touch write.sh script, which will be on my website. Make sure that it has execute permissions so it can run as a program. Hit OK, add, close, and let's restart again. Control backspace just restarts your X11 session, so that'll allow me to re-log in without having to reboot entirely. Hooray, things are working. Touchscreen's working, internet's working, sound is working. Firefox is working. Thanks for watching.